Hi and welcome back for a new Excel tutorial for Finance 2 and Stockholm Business School. We will today use Excel to calculate some statistical measures. The agenda for today is to find the highest as well as the lowest value, calculate the mean, the standard deviation, skewness and kurtosis. The mean or the average is simply calculated by summing up all the observed values, which in our case is returns and divide by the amounts of observations, which in our case is months. Visually, this is the center of the normal distribution curve, and in finance, this is our expected return. The standard deviation is a measure of the width of the normal distribution curve and the normal deviation from the mean. In finance, this is a measure of risk, since it tells us how uncertain our expected return is. A high standard deviation means higher risk, since the return deviates more from the mean. A low standard deviation instead means lower risk, since the return deviates less from the mean, making our expected return a better estimate. The standard deviation is calculated by taking the square root of the variance, which is calculated by adding up all the squared deviations from the mean, and divide these by the amounts of observations minus 1. Skew is a measure of the distribution's skewness. A positive skew means that the right tail is longer than the left tail, and vice versa for a negative skew. A positive skew implies that standard deviation overestimates the risk, since large positive deviations is more common than large negative deviations. A negative skew instead implies that the standard deviation underestimates the risk, since large negative deviations is more common than large positive ones. Skew is calculated by summing up all the cubed deviations from the mean and divide these by the amounts of observations multiplied by the cubed standard deviation. Kurtosis is a measure of the distribution's degree of fat tails. A positive kurtosis means that large deviations are more common than suggested by the normal distribution and therefore implies that standard deviation underestimates the risk. A negative kurtosis instead implies that the tails are thinner than suggested by the normal distribution and hence the standard deviation under overestimates the risk. Since large deviations from the mean are less common than we assume, which in our turn makes the expected return a better estimate. Kurtosis is calculated by adding up all the deviations from the mean raised to the power of 4 divided by the amount of observations times the standard deviation raised to the power of 4. Since we for normal distribution assumes 3, we deduct 3 to get 0 as expected kurtosis. Now moving on to Excel. And I have now prepared some historical data for OMXS30 and the stock fingerprint cards. We can start with OMXS30 and to find the highest value, or in our case highest return, we use the formula max and we mark the area in which we have the returns, which we can do by pressing control shift down. To get the minimum value we use min and the same area once again. And we know now that the highest return that OMX30 has had in the last 20 years is plus 17% and the lowest return is minus 17%. The mean or the average return or expected return in finance then, is calculated by using the formula average and of course mark the same area once again. The standard deviation is calculated by using the formula stdev.s and once again mark the same area. And we can see that OMXS30 had a mean of 1% and a standard deviation of 6%. So 
68.2% of all months should have a, a return somewhere between minus 5% and plus 7%. Just as a reminder of how standard deviation works. And to calculate the skewness we use the formula skew. And mark the same area. Perhaps no surprise. To calculate kurtosis we use the formula kurt. mark the same area. We just quickly do the same thing for fingerprint cards and we can see if they are a bit different or so. So use the formula max. Min. Average. stdev.s The s is just since we have a sample. We don't have all all the monthly returns for for all, for the whole life of the stock. So we use a sample and then, then we have stdev.s. Kurtosis. And we can now compare these two. As we can see, fingerprint cards has, has returns between 111% and minus 29%. When OMX is 30 head deviates between 17 and minus 17 percent. So we can just by looking at the max and mean value assumes that perhaps fingerprint cards has a higher standard deviation and of course they do. Fingerprint cards has a standard deviation of 29 percent which can be compared to OMX's 30 that had 6 percent. We can see that OMX's 30 had a skewness of almost zero but a bit negative and a bit positive kurtosis, which implies that the standard deviation of 6% underestimates the risk. Since large, large deviations is more common than we assume, and since large negative deviations from the mean is more common than large positive deviations. However, it's pretty much zero, so perhaps not, not that big of an underestimate. However, if we look at fingerprint cards we can see that we have a quite high positive skewness implying that standard deviation overestimates the risk since large positive deviations is more common than large negative deviations. On the other hand we have a kurtosis of 3 which instead implies that standard deviation underestimates the risk since large positive sorry since large deviations positive or negative is more common than we assume when using the standard deviation as a measure of risk. And this was all for today. Thank you very much. Goodbye.